gotten a lot of questions about how I picked the system uh, specifications that I did for my solar array. So I thought I'd do a quick series of videos on how I made the choices that I did. And you can walk along with me if you want to see the next videos. Please like and subscribe and hit the notify button so that you know when the next one comes up. The, the first step is to decide whether you're going to be grid tie or off grid. Uh, my system is grid tie, so I'll focus on that, but we'll give some details on the difference between the two. The second step, how much power do I consume? We'll go through how to figure that out. And then the next one is how much power do I want to produce? So we'll go through that. And then finally, uh, what size array will achieve my target production? So first of all, a grid tie versus off grid. For a grid tie system, you will still be connected to your utility company they will provide any power that your system doesn't produce and if you are able to do net metering with them they will purchase any power that you produce over what you need and that is called net metering it's usually done by the month and my utility does it by the month with a grid tie system uh, and the initial investment is smaller it's a smaller system there's no batteries that are required but you do still have some monthly utility bill. Down below I, here I have a graph that shows a month of my production and consumption. Here you can see the first few days in September I consumed more than I produced and then we had some sunny days and you can tell by the temperature dipping down we were requiring less air conditioning and so uh, my production was more than my consumption on those days. Now you can see for the beginning of the month I consumed more than I produced. It's, it's pretty clear there were only two days that I produced more than I consumed. Then you can see the temperature starts to fall a little bit closer to nominal for what we keep our house at and so we were producing way more than we were using. The advantage of a net meter by month is if I overconsume in the beginning of the month and overproduce in the end of the month that all gets washed out and at the end of the month the ups and downs are all summed together and I pay the delta for that. So it kind of acts like a month-long battery if you will. Um, everything during that month is evened out. In an off-grid system there are no utility connections. So if your system goes down you have no power. If you need to consume more than you're producing or your batteries have stored then you're unable to do that. Um, all the power is supplied by your system. The initial investment is higher because you need a much larger system and you need a battery bank to store power for those down days. In the case of a off-grid system this graph clearly wouldn't work because there's lots of days where I'm consuming more than I'm producing and those days are you know several in a row. I would need a battery that could last half the month so that the power I produced in this period of time could be used uh, downstream for the next five or six days that would require a very large battery so in order to compensate for that you need a much larger system so that you don't need as large a battery there's a lot that goes into figuring that out but the advantage is there's no monthly utility bill uh, you're able to be completely disconnected you may want to do that if uh, you don't have a utility available in your area or you have some other goal of being off-grid but this would be much harder to start out with in my opinion and much more expensive so I went with a grid tie system so that I could get my foot in the water and um, have a system that was a low initial cost and I can always expand it later. So the first step in how much power do I consume is to collect one year of your household power usage. Um, my utility bill has that information on each bill. There is a, a graph of all of the power consumed for each month so it's pretty easy to collect and this is usually in kilowatt hours and you want to make sure it's in kilowatt hours that's the uh, units that we'll be working in 
So I've attached an Excel document here that you can fill out to help you do this analysis. And it simply requires you to fill in these green highlighted boxes. So the first thing is take your utility bill and plug in January through December into this historical consumption column. And at the bottom, it'll tally up how much you use in a year. In my case, uh, 24,000 kilowatt hours. The um, 24,000 kilowatt hour number is what you need to cover if you're going to be off grid, but it's more complicated than that because that's just the amount for the year. You need to cover the high and low points throughout the year as well. But we'll use this as a calculation point for sizing our grid tie system. The optimum grid tie system, in my view, is about 50%. You can go above or below that. But the reason being, if you take your bill and you look at the costs on it, in my case, I have a, a generation, a transmission, and a distribution cost. The transmission cost is usually a flat rate. If I use zero electricity for the month, I will get charged uh, $35. And if I use you know, 3,000 kilowatt hours, it's only, you know, a couple dollars more than that. So this is pretty much a flat amount. These other two, the distribution and generation, are what I pay for by kilowatt hour. So when I do my analysis, I just take these two and sum them together, and then I divide them by the total consumption for that month. So 2,485 kilowatt hours divided by $274.62 is about 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, you need to contact your utility and find out, first of all, do they allow you to do a grid tie system? And then there's a couple things you need to understand. Do they do net metering by the month? And if you overproduce, what do they pay you? In my case, my utility only pays four cents a kilowatt hour if I overproduce. So there's very little incentive to overproduce and if I sized a system that could cover 100% of my power, for instance, for the year, it's going to way overproduce in some months. So when I'm overproducing, I only get paid four cents a kilowatt hour. So it doesn't make sense to overproduce. It takes a lot longer to pay off my system at four cents a kilowatt hour than it does at 11 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, my goal is, by keeping my system at around 50%, um, I'm only ever producing power at 11 cents per kilowatt hour, and that allows me to pay off my system uh, significantly faster than if I overproduce. So that, that's why I do um, about 50, 60 percent as my as my target. So we'll take our 2,400 kilowatt hour uh, total for the year and multiply that by our 50 percent target. So then our array production target would be 12,000 kilowatt hours. So when I design my system, I'm going to be shooting for around 12,000 kilowatt hours. And I know that that will um, put me under my, um, under my consumption umbrella sufficiently to optimize my return on my investment. The next step is what size array will achieve my target production. So I'll put a link below to this website. It has a calculator that works really well. You enter your address for where you live, and then um, it will ask you some information. You put in the size of system in kilowatt hours. In my case, I put in 9.4 kilowatt hours because that's the system that I installed. And there's these little info buttons if you don't understand um, what they're asking, you can click on, it gives a lot more detail. I put in standard modules. In my case, I have a fixed rack. There's an option for roof rack. The system loss they put in is 14%, which I'll show you in a minute. It worked out very well to match my actual production. My tilt angle is 30 degrees. If you're doing it on the roof, uh, you'll want to adjust for that. And if you watch my install video, there's um, an angle at which you should set it depending on where you are on the globe. And then the azimuth for me, I'm pointed due south, so that's 180 degrees. And then it kicks out the production, and this is 12.7 uh, 
uh, megawatt hours, which is uh, basically right in line with what I needed to produce to hit my target. But the nice thing about this is it gives the monthly output that's expected. And it's really important to have that information because you can compare it now in our chart and see if the production matches the consumption. Now before we go to that, um, I plotted for you the actual production that my system produced here in orange with the estimated production that this website gives in green and you can see it very closely matches. So I have some pretty high confidence that this will give you the results you need to predict your actual production and consumption. Now you can take the Excel sheet that I've attached. You've already entered your historical consumption. And now from this website, it has given you month by month your expected production for the system that you have just designed. And you can enter that here in the estimated production column. And that'll give you a total uh, that should match this one. In this case, it does 12,761 kilowatt hours for the year. Now, if we look at this uh, output, and in this Excel sheet, it'll make this little chart for you here, and that compares the historical consumption that you've put in from your utility bills with the production expectation from the system that you just designed, and it plots it over here. So in orange is your consumption, and in green is the production, and you can see in this particular scenario, there's a couple months that will be very close to net zero and everything else will uh, underproduce for what is consumed for that month. Therefore, I know that I will always be in the 11 cent per kilowatt hour range. Now, my utility charges more per month if you have a solar array connected to the system. There's an extra base charge. Because of that, I, I always start out a little bit in the hole and my analysis shows that my per kilowatt hour um, pay rate will be about 10 cents. So that's what I've entered here and you'll, you'll have to do that analysis for your utility uh, based on the bills that you've received. And then you can take your expected system cost for the system you've designed and put it here in the system cost space. Um, that will help the chart fill out the remainder of the details for you. So when we put that 10 cents per kilowatt hour and uh, the cost for the system, in my case, $9,000, we can also enter this uh, historical uh, billing. If you put in the amount that you paid each month for the consumption that you put in, then you will be able to uh, get the results of this chart. This chart will then calculate your new bill, how much you save each month, in power and it will tell you uh, how long it will take to pay it off. In this case, seven years and the rate of return on your investment, in this case, it'll be a 14% return. So I'd need like uh, to put my money in a CD that would return 14% in order to achieve uh, the same performance as this uh, solar system. So today we talked about sizing our array and please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and you will be notified when I put in the next episode. Uh, the next episode, we will talk about um, what solar system is best for you, and I'll give you some information on how I made the decisions that I did. And I've also put in some links on the screen here for um, the one-year performance of my system. Uh, was it actually profitable or not? and also a link to the video of the install if you haven't seen that. Uh, you can see uh, all the steps I went through to install the system that I put in. So thanks for watching. See you next time.